Moisturizer. And going back to what we came for, we started at Matlabantu's house when she was telling Bangizwe about Andile. Then now she has to go and pretend like she cared about those people from Shopez. Bangizwe told her to go, otherwise people will become suspicious. And he also asked her, how's the adoption going? She told him that it will depend on the lawyer Sandra Stein. And she continued telling him that she won't let anyone tell her that Zanotando has been taken from her and Bangizwe said at least Veronica is not gonna fight Lindy when this and Lindy was said Veronica is so stupid instead of crying for the baby she's crying for that dead woman with a gold tooth Bangizwe told her they need to put all this behind them so they can get on with life going to Copra to Somukwena's house Rahadi was trying to call Dimpo and Dimpo's phone was in voicemail when Dimpo was missing so early in the morning Rahadi was confused when she was calling Bonolo and Bonolo came out while Rahadi Rahadi was asking her where Timpo is. Bonolo told Rahadi that she haven't seen her and Copra came asking both of them why so much noise so early in the morning. Rahadi told Copra that she's looking for Timpo. He asked her if she did call her. She responded saying that her cell phone is in voicemail and then Rahadi tried calling Tsepiso asking Tsepiso if she haven't seen Timpo. Tsepiso told Rahadi that she saw Timpo yesterday and she also asked Rahadi if everything is okay. Rahadi told Tsepiso so that maybe she went to the shops and at that time Bonolo was telling Copra she tried calling her but it goes to voicemail. Rahadi continued asking Tsepiso if Timpo haven't spoken to her about Ganiso's passing. Tsepiso was shocked asking Rahadi if Ganiso is dead. Asking Rahadi when did that happen. Rahadi was surprised that Timpo didn't tell her friend. When Tsepiso was telling Rahadi that this is her first time to hear that. When Tsepiso was asking Rahadi what happened. Rahadi told Tsepiso Piso, that's a long story. Sepiso told Rahadi she'll come to Mukwena's later. So they were all surprised that Sepiso didn't know about Ganiso's death. Bonolo told Rahadi that she also tried to call Dimpo but her phone goes through voicemail. And going to Bukosi Shopez house, memory the house helper was taking good care of the Shopez clothes, putting all of them in order. When Timpo entered, greeting each other, when memory was telling Timpo she couldn't believe it when she said she was at the gate, memory continued telling Timpo she knows how she feels. And Timpo was crying when she was asking how are the funeral arrangements going. The helper told Timpo that the memorial service is about to begin at Kanisa Diamond Mine and the funeral will be held in KZN tomorrow. Dimpo asked the helper if she can have a moment and the auntie told Dimpo to take her time because this is the last time they will be here in this house. Dimpo went to another room, to Kanisa's room. She went inside and took Kanisa's shirt, smelled his cologne and she started crying holding it. Thinking about the times she had with Kanisa, especially when Kanisa was proposing to her, Dimpo thought about the engagement. She she had with Ganiso and she lied on his bed looking at Ganiso on the photo and going to Lindywe's house. Lindywe was with Bukosi Shope's brother when she was asking him if she can offer him something to drink. Bukosi's brother said no thanks Miss Jamini and he continued telling her that as they are the Tumbeza family like to thank her what she did for his brother. It's no wonder everyone speaks so highly about her. They are all singing her praises. Lindywe told Lopez's brother that they were practically family as he knows they were business partners. They were bound by their granddaughter Zanotando. Lopez's brother told Lindywe that he will leave his address so that if anyone in Lindywe's house would like to come to the funeral they can and then after the funeral in the morning period they will sit as a family and discuss Zanotando. Lindywe told Lopez's brother that in their discussion they don't have to automatically get to keep the child. Lopez's brother told Lindywe that he will make sure that they follow the tradition and at that moment Lindywe's cell phone started ringing and it was a phone call from Dimpo. When Lopez's brother was saying goodbye to Lindywe telling her that they will see each other at the memorial service and then Lindywe answered Dimpo Mukwena's phone call and going back to Shopper's house Dimpo was crying
crying, looking at Ganiso's picture on the wall when Lindiwe entered. And Timpo told Lindiwe she's sorry because she didn't know who to call. She's just so overwhelmed. She continued crying, telling Lindiwe that it hurts. They both sit on Ganiso's bed when Timpo was telling Lindiwe that Ganiso was calling her and he was so happy. When he came back from Atlanta, she came running to see him. All the family were here. After that, he was killed like a wild dog and Timpo continued crying when she was telling Lindy with that who's that evil person who can kill people like this. Lindy Wei told Timpo not to do that on herself. She told her to cherish her memories of him. Timpo continued crying and moving back to Copra Tuzo's house, he was calling his sister when he was saying Timpo is not answering the phone, saying that he's been trying her for a long time, even sending her WhatsApp messages. She's not responding. Brahad told Cobra to call the cops. This is South Africa. If a woman goes missing for a few hours, you have to take a quick action. Cobra begged Rahadi not to think the worst. Rahadi continued repeating that this is South Africa. Cobra needs to call the cops, Mueti, Shabalala or anyone. Because it's not normal for Timpo not to answer the phone. And going to Kanisa Diamond Mine at the memorial service, Andile was talking in front of them, telling them what happened at the shoppers is tragic. As if someone will come in and tell them it was all a joke. Andile started addressing Kanyiso, saying that him and Kanyiso were close. They were more like brothers. He liked to look good and to party. He reminded him of Zolani. Him and Zolani shared the same stuff. And Lindiwe acted surprised hearing that when Andile continued saying that even though Kanyiso and Zolani were alike, they didn't get along. In a sense, he feel that their personalities clashed because they were similar, because they were both love going out and fashion. Andile continued telling them that Kwezi, in his eyes, Kwezi was a queen. Kwezi was the most peaceful, calm person he ever knew. She wanted to be happy and she was a blessing at the Shopper family. And they left them a gift, Zanotando. Andile continued telling Bukosi Shopper's brother that he would like to assure them that they will not cut off their relationship with Zanotando. They can see her whenever they want. They won't stop them. And if they want her, they will bring to the Shopper family. And at that time, Lindy West's face looked so annoyed by Andile's words. Andile continued telling them that the family will take good care of Zanotando because she will remind them of her mother. And then after Andile, Veronica stood up singing. And then she started talking, saying that as they can hear her singing, inside she's broken and she is shattered and at that moment Andile started noticing his mother's face Veronica continued saying that she will never see Fufu again her best friend no one was classy and stylish and smart as the fool she had so life of her party in her death is not fair Veronica continued telling them that the fool knew how to command their attention she continued saying that as she is stylish like this and the jacket she is wearing right now it's because the fool bought it for her because Fufu had a style. She continued saying that they are not here to mourn but they are all here to celebrate her life. She continued saying that the person who killed her and her family is also dead. She said, Fufu, my friend, rest in peace till we meet again. And then Veronica started crying again when Bukosi Shopper's brother stood up and tried to calm her down. Back to Copra Tuso Mukwena's house, Dimpo came in the house and she started hugging Tsepiso, her friend. And she told the family that she didn't mean to stress them by disappearing. She just wanted to be at the Shopper's one last time. She continued telling Rahadi that she knew that Rahadi fought for her to share what she felt and even called Lindy away. She said she knows it wasn't easy. When she heard that Nganiso was gone, she didn't know what to feel or do with her feelings. The anger and the pain she had were just too heavy for her to bear. She said she felt like she was going crazy. Rahadi and the family, they told Dimpo, it's okay. Whatever happens, she must always remember that they are all here for her. Dimpo told them that she is going to the memorial service in Kanisa, and the rest of the family told Dimpo they are coming 
along with her. And moving back to the memorial service, Andile was addressing the people telling them that thank you to everyone for coming. They are about to close. He thanked all of them for their support and, and respect and love. There is nothing more he can say. The Mukwenas entered and Andile told them that before they close, he see the Mukwena family coming and he would like Kanyeso's fiance Timpo Mukwena to say a few words. And Timpo before sitting down proceeded to the front to say a few words. She told the people that it's not easy to stand in front of them when her heart is broken. If she known her time with love will be so short, she'd have shown him love the first time she met him. Timpo continued telling them that Kanyeso changed her mind, especially to those who know that Timpo loved her independence and freedom. She continued saying that Kanyeso loved and got angry passionately. He also showed happiness passionately. He loved her passionately. And she said, rest in peace, my love. And going back to Lindy Wei's house, Lindy Wei was singing to Zano Tando when Bangiz were entered. And they both sat next to each other with Zano Tando in between. When Bangiz were told Lindy Wei that, Lindy Wei owes him because when he was preparing to ask Lindy Wei out, she went and married someone else, Zueli Tikan, and raised the kids with him and left him like that. Lindy Wei told Bangizwe that they are together now. Bangizwe continued telling Lindy Wei that it must happen now. That he wants to marry her. He wants Lindy Wei to be Mercy Zwani. And Lindy Wei said okay. And they both started laughing. Bangizwe repeated his words telling Lindy Wei that he wants to marry her. And thanks for watching. <laughs>